Matthew 5, 3 says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Father God, we thank you for your scriptures. God, thank you for... Uh, these be attitudes, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that you would uh, continue to fill us with your spirit. God, give us understanding of your scripture so that we may be uh, edified on tonight, Father God. I ask, like I ask you all the time, Lord God, that you would make this word potent, Lord God, that it would leave a, a, a sweet aroma, Lord God, in the nostrils of the saints in the spirit, Father God. Let us all leave with the aroma of Yahweh upon us, Father God. Let us uh, uh, look like you, sound more like you, Lord God. Because of your scriptures, God, in Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. All right, all right, all right. Hallelujah. Brothers, thank y'all so much, man. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All right, you guys, so we're going to get right into it, y'all. Um, last time I was up here, we've been talking about the Beatitudes, right? Y'all remember that? So we've been covering them each time I came up here, man. And we have made it on down to, to Beatitude uh, number nine. So I'm going to just do a little small little recap uh, as quickly as we can. Uh, Cause I'm going to try to get y'all out of here soon, man. This is a school night and we got to put the kids to bed. So we're going we gonna, to we gonna get to it. So uh, just real quick, man, um, the Beatitudes, y'all. Uh, Jesus preaches the be these Beatitudes uh, and it was called on the Sermon on the Mount. In verse one in Matthew five, it says, and seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain and when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, and then boom, he gives us the Beatitudes, right? So there are nine Beatitudes that Jesus speaks about that's recorded in Matthew. And we talked about, well, what is a Beatitude? Well, we saw that these Beatitudes, they, these scriptures start off with the word blessed are. In the Greek, that blessed is makarios. Remember that? Makarios. And we learned that it means happy or happier. Fortunate, well off, or another term that I like that we coin is supremely blessed. So I want you to tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, you are supremely blessed. Now find another neighbor. All right, say, neighbor, I am supremely blessed. You feel that? That that's supremely like it's just it, it got some to it, man. Glory to God. Glory to God. So, number four, y'all, even in the Old Testament, man, there are some Beatitudes even in the Old Testament. And we saw that in uh, Deuteronomy 28, the blessing and the curses. Blessed shall thou be in the city, and blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, the fruit of the ground. Uh, verse five, blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. And six, blessed shall thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. So we saw that, man, there's some Beatitudes also in the Old Testament. Now, beatitude, we said, y'all, is an attitude of the kingdom. We said in this life, man, you can have a bad attitude or you can have a good attitude. You can have a worldly attitude or you can have a godly attitude. You could have a devilish attitude or you could have a kingdom-minded, God-mind attitude. You know what I'm saying? We even saw it even in the workplace. You could have one person that does an awesome job on the work that they do, but the attitude is just bad. And you got another person who they, they do okay, but they got a great attitude when they come to work. They got a smile on their face. They tell everybody good morning. They just, they just are pleasant to be around. Having a good attitude matters, but not, we don't want you to just have a, just a good attitude. We want you to have a be attitude, a kingdom-minded attitude. That's what we want to have. And then we went through, man, and then we began to chop down and go through each beatitude. Man, we talked about blessed are the poor in spirit. 
theirs are the kingdom of heaven. We said that that poor in spirit is not referring to your bank account, all right? It's referring actually to your inward condition, whatever's going on outward. Whatever state may be on the outside, rather on the inside, you see that you are rich spiritually because of your connection with Yah. All right? That's to be poor in spirit. Blessed are the day that mourn, for they shall be comforted. We learn about that mourn. We said that, you know, that mourn sounds like it could be talking about when somebody has passed away and you mourn that person. But what Jesus was talking about, he was not talking about mourning people. He was talking about mourning your sin. And it was not just the mourning of the consequences of sin, because sometimes we fall into sin and some consequences occur for it, and we were crying about the consequences that happened, but not the actual sin itself. What Jesus is wanting us to do, it says, is not the mourning of the consequences of sin, but over the sin itself. That's what we should be mourning about. That's what we should be asking God for forgiveness about. That's what we should feel hurt at, because why? Because it's staying our soul, man. And we don't want to be dirty. We want to be clean, really, because we're new creatures. Amen? So we talked about beatitude number three. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. We learned that that meek does not mean it's a person that's quiet or timid. No, that's not what meekness is. We saw that meekness is really of submitting to God, being in submission towards God. Meekness is the condition of being submissive. Meekness toward God is the position of our heart in which we accept his dealings with us as good. And therefore, without disputing or resisting. So we're not trying to uh, 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 be like, Lord, I, that's not what, no. No, we, we go in with what God is leading us to do and what he's showing us that he wants to be done in our lives, man. So meekness is submissiveness towards God. We learn in uh, Beatitude number four, a blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Now, we, that was actually talking about, y'all, just a longing, a desire to just want to be acceptable in God's sight. There's a thirst for it. There's, just, there's a hunger, there's a thirst for I just want to just, I'm just trying to do the right thing, man. I'm just trying to live godly as, as, as best as I can. I know I'm not perfect. We all know we're not perfect. The Bible says that we have all fallen short of the glory of God. There's none, with, none in here without sin. You know what I'm saying? Yes, we all have fallen short. But there's that, 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 that wanting to long to, to be right, to long to be who you ought to be, right? You long to act how you know you should act. Because you know sometimes we don't act like we're supposed to, man. We're going to keep it real with ourselves. We know ourselves is like, man, I, I, I want to do better with that anger, man. I want to do better. I wanna, don't want to have that, that chip on my shoulder all the time. You know, I want to do better with, with that thing that, that I've been, been struggling with. I don't want to struggle like that like my family did. I want to walk this thing out better. That's that desire. And, there's a, a, and with that, man, there's a, there's, you know, there's, there's a reality of good and a perception of good. And that's, that's two different things. Because a lot of people, they, they, they could perceive to be trying to be good. They, 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 they have a facade that they look like they're good, right? But, but there's an actual reality of, of, of really, like that person really is trying to walk this thing out. You see what I'm saying? A reality of good, not a perception of being good. Number five, blessed are the merciful, for they, they shall obtain mercy. All right, we learned that mercy is to not receive what you actually deserve. Like when you know yourself, when you understand who we are, when you understand yourself and that, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a wretched man that I am. Who's going to deliver me from the body of this day? Lord, you know my struggles. And when you realize what you really deserve, but God says he holds that back, that's mercy. And how do we get that mercy by Given mercy. We give mercy because we know we need mercy. We had discussed about that wicked servant. Y'all remember the wicked servant? That brother was forgiven almost a half a million dollars when we looked at it on paper what it was. In today's money, right? It was completely wiped clean. He was forgiven, but then he go and find his servant and strong on him and ask him, pay it without owe me. And, and the word get back to the king like, man, look what he just did. We saw he, you just forgave him, but look what he did to his own. And the Lord said, man, that's, that's a wicked servant. So it's, it's a, to receive mercy, it's to not give it back to somebody else. 
That's wickedness, man, knowing how much you have been forgiven. That's why we get mercy. Number six, man, we talked about the pure in heart, for they shall see God. We had talked about the pure. We had really broke in to talk about, man, children, our childhood. And as, as I'm thinking about that, man, Sunday was beautiful. I, I, Sunday was amazing. It really was amazing up in here, man. And I give the Lord glory for that. And I remember the, 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 the kids, man, the babes in Christ, man, they up there worshiping, hands up. Some of them got tears in their eyes, man. You know what I'm saying? So they show me the, the, the move of God, man, is moving is, is from the oldest to the youngest, man. And that is an amazing thing for it to reach the children because they are pure. And, you know, they, they got like a special connection with God early on yet. They don't, if you just, if you, if you, we have to give them the opportunity, you know what I'm saying, for God to come through. Not, 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 we pastors talked about those not coming to the church. Man, look, man, bring them children to church. Because you never know what go, you know what I'm saying? And, and I want us to take, take a step and do better. Let's not just bring them to church. That iPad and that cell phone, man, look, you got time to do that outside, man. Or in the house of God, man, let them be alert. Let them be able to sit. They can sit still. But you just got you to you tell them, though. Let them sit still. And they go, they, they go get it. They go get it. They go on their own. They go begin to just, and like they, they coming up on their own because they, they pure. They, they, they've been really close to God. They just they didn't know. They didn't remember. You know what I'm saying? But they, they, they babies. So let them babies come to church. Let them, if they want to come to the front and worship, let, let, yeah. Let the Holy Spirit have his way. I'm believing for the Spirit of God to just move and just, all them children be, be, be. We got to learn from the children. You know what I'm saying? Glory to God. Then we also talked about, y'all, we talked about the blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. That was the last one we had talked about uh, most recently, and we looked at that word peacemaker. And peacemaker means it's a person that loves peace. If you're a child of God, notice you are a peacemaker. You love peace. You want peace all around you. You don't want no trouble. You're not trying to make no, no noise around with, with nobody. You know what I'm saying? You're trying to live peaceably with all men the best way that you can. That's what we call to do. A peacemaker is somebody, I, 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 I had a visual and I just saw like, you know, some confusion going on, right? And, and, and let's say confusion gets thrown your way, all right? And you catch that confusion. And then you begin to mold that confusion and you bring it back and you send it back at us with peace. When you are in the equation, it should come out with peace. You feel what I'm saying? If you in the equation, if you in the house, if you part of the project, if you in the, in, in, in the workplace, you carry peace around you. Distribute that peace. Distribute that peace. Peacemakers love to see peace, man. Romans 12, 18, we talked about, um, if it be possible, as much light in you live peaceably with all men. If it be possible. Sometimes it's not possible. We talked about that. We're just going to be real. Some people, you just got, you know, all right, you're not going to take my peace, though. I'm, I'm going I'm to I'm go, but I'm going to leave with my peace. <laughs> not that peace, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Peace, peace. Jesus, peace, you know? <laughs> Hallelujah. And then we even said, man, in, in, in the NLT, do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. You don't want no quarrels. You don't want no beef with nobody. Like, you know, it's not go, it, it, it's going, it's going to take your mind off of focus, man. And, and there's one real quick story, man. We was uh, getting things situated with, with, the, with the new website, man. So we connected with, a, with another brother from Atlanta, man. Did a, an amazing job on the website, man. So uh, he got it set up, man. And me and him, we have been conversing, man. And it, it, got, it, got, it got a little tight in the conversation. It got a little tight. It, and he, he came at me, uh, came at me with some, with, some, with some heat. And I did not expect that. And, and you know, because, you know, we try to be, I'm usually peace with anybody, everybody. You know what I'm saying? And it kind of came with some. And it kind of, it came back out, like, you know, because what you deliver, you're going to get back. Like, that's just, that's the way this world works. What you put out, you, you, it might come back to you. So it came back, and I, I felt bad that it came back. But I was just kind of a little surprised that he kind of came at me that way, right? So I said, man, I, I'm going to have to apologize. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to have to apologize, right? Because it was just on my mind too, 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 too much. You know, and I didn't want 
a whole nother day going up, and I'm still thinking like, nah, 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 we gonna, we gonna, I'm gonna call him back today, and we gonna, we gonna talk, to, we gonna talk about it. And, uh, and we did talk about it. He was really surprised that I came in the pod. I said, no, 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 man, it was all good. You know, we just got, kind of got passionate about the, about the, the project, and no, it's good, man. You don't need to apologize. I said, no, yes, yes, I do. No, no, I do, I do. And, and I remember me and uh, Deacon Chavis, I was telling him about it, man, and because you just never know, bro. I could tell he didn't expect me to apologize. You know, and that made me realize, man, the world don't is not used to hearing apologies. They, it, it's, it's, it's a bit foreign. You know what I'm saying? It, it, they're not used to it. So when it came, I, I believe that the, the light of Christ was able to show up. You know what I'm saying? So we never know just what an apology can do with a person that might be just that little breadcrumb to remind that person, man, the, the, the love of God is real. Because what I didn't want, y'all, I didn't want him to be like, Got them Christians be, cause you know he not, cause he not, you know what I'm saying. He a brother, but he not, he not, he not a brother like, like, he don't know yet. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to mess up the opportunity of him being able to know when him looking at him and look. That's how them church people do. They, 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 they cut up just cause you caught me on a, you know, you swung, I swung back. It was just, you know what I'm saying? But apologies. Apologize. We want to live peaceable with, with everybody. No, 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 no beef with nobody. Uh, Romans 14:19. It says, let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. Follow after the things that because will make for peace. Not the things that are going to make for trouble. Don't go talk to, 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 to a world in about the situation that's going on. They're just going to just lead you to, to, to bring some more fire into that. And it's just, yeah, that, that's gasoline over there. Don't, don't do that. No, no, no. So tonight, y'all, we're going to uh, talk about persecution. Somebody say persecution. persecution. In verse 10, it says, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. So saints... This message, I believe, man, is really going to be for our, our new believers. Because I've been seeing a lot of new faces here at Philadelphia, man. And we praise God for the, 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 the influx of people that has coming on, man. And, and, and there may be somebody, you know, trying Bible study out for the first time tonight, you know. Because I remember my first time coming to Bible study back at, at the old building, man. And I, remember, I was nervous. Because I was like, you know, this, 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 is, this is cool. You know, I came out, I've been coming on Sunday. I said, well, let me, I'm going to try a, a Tuesday Bible study. But you know, when something is new, it's like you kind of be like, ah, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what they're going to say. Don't have to ask some questions. Or they going to ask me about some scriptures. I don't know scriptures like that. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm going to feel. But when I came in and it was just like a Sunday service, but in, in, in I guess, regular clothes, everybody was kind of just chill. You know what I'm saying? I was like, wow, that is, that's nice. That's nice. So, this is really going to be for our new believers, but at the same time, our older saints, man, you go, you go, I'm going to need some amens from me because you're going you to know about this persecution because you didn't been in this journey a little bit longer. You know what I'm saying? And you know what persecution feel like because in this journey with Christ, part of the journey, man, part of the journey is actually persecution. Yes, sir. It actually, it really actually, one of the, the identifiers that you're his. When you face persecution. Okay. Now, one thing, I, first thing that I noticed, man, in, uh, in this beatitude, that it has the same B part as beatitude number one. If you look at verse three, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And then verse 10, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And I was like, well, what that mean, Lord? That, that gotta mean something. Because you, you, maybe you showed it to me. I didn't notice it before. I'm telling you, this whole time, I never noticed it. Until I got to it, and it was like, and he showed that. I was like, okay, well, what does that mean? So then I go back and think about what the poor in spirit, remember, we're not concerned about the outward condition, up or down. The bank account good, the bank account bad, up or down, health-wise, health good, health bad. No matter what, you still, your center of joy is still Jesus. On, All right? And that's the ones that got the kingdom of heaven. And then those that are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, those are the ones that have the kingdom of heaven. So they're not worried about the outside. The inside is good. And they're not worried about the persecution that's going on either. Amen. 
because they know that, that it comes with it. We're going to learn a little, little bit more about persecution. So let's, let's dig in it. Now, what persecution is not, all right, I want to get that out the way. The scripture says when you are persecuted for righteousness, all right, because in this day and age, they're hollering about persecution on all type of stuff. That's, that's not, no, no, that's not really persecution. It's not persecution if you're a Democrat. It's not persecution if you're a Republican. It's not persecution for being in the alphabet community. You know the alphabet community? The LGBT, QRSCUV, that, that community. No. Not persecution because that, no. It's not persecution for being a woman. A woman's rights, you know, that's not the persecution Jesus is talking about. And quite honestly, here we go, it's not even the persecution for the color of your skin. Amen. What Jesus is talking about. Now, we could, we, could, we, could, we could show that going on, right? But in context of what Jesus is talking about, he's talking about righteousness. This persecution is for the sake of righteousness. It's being persecuted, y'all, for doing what is right for doing the right thing, all right? Now, persecution in the Greek is a word called dioko. Say it with me, dioko, dioko. And it means several things. I'm gonna just run through it. It means to make, to run, or flee, put to flight, drive away, to run swiftly in order to catch a person or thing, to run after, to pursue in a hostile manner to harass, to trouble, to be mistreated, to suffer on account of something. In persecution, y'all, it happens. And it happens in many, many different forms, in many, many different places. Now, on a global scale, persecution around the world, I'm going to give y'all just a couple of stats. 360 million Christians are living in places where they experience high levels of persecution and di uh, discrimination, and that's according to the Open Doors 2023 World Watch List. 360 million Christians living in places where they're persecuted, high levels of persecution. Now, you know, Pastor and said it, when they give us stats, know that that number is usually higher than that. So it might, it's 360 million, you might as well double it. You probably could double it. One in seven Christians worldwide experiences persecution, including harassment, violence, imprisonment, and even death for their faith. One in seven, man. Count seven people, and then one of them being persecuted, and some of them even to death. 5,621 Christians were killed for their faith in 2022. And they say it was a slight increase from the previous year. We know that number most likely was more than that. That's the only ones they was able to find out about. What about the ones they're not really even finding out about? Countries, y'all, with the most severe persecution North Korea, they say the most dangerous place for Christians due to extreme state repression and indoctrination. Somalia, Christians face death if their faith is discovered. If they find out about it, man, that's it. Yemen, conversion from Islam to Christianity is punishable by death. People in this world, man, dying, believing in Jesus. And somebody want to tell me that, that, that Jesus is not real? Somebody want to tell me people are going to die for something that's not real? I don't know about that. No, 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 no. You're not going to die for something that's not real. You're going, cause you Because you know it's real. I have seen, heard many stories, seen many articles about men. They're coming up to the door, holding the gun at their head, deny Christ, or it's a bullet. And they, they don't deny Christ. They say, no, I'm not, I'm not going to deny him. He's my Lord. Which holds to the scripture. Which holds to the scripture when it says, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. In place in that situation, they absolutely have the kingdom of heaven. They had it in them, and they absolutely will be there. 
That's a hard thing to swallow, though. It's like, man, we don't know about this stuff. You know, we've been blessed. We've been covered. We've been protected. But how long does that last? I often wonder how long does that last? It made me think about even the, 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 the missionaries out there, you know? Places in China, man, they got to close. They can't have no church out there. They, they got to go underground. And don't let them find you with a Bible. You know what I'm saying? But we freely able to, you know, be openly about our faith. That's a blessing. And I think we, and myself, man, we take it for granted. Like, you know, and so I looked at these things, you know, we don't consider these things, but this is real life stuff that's happening. It's okay for us to gather right here, but on another part of God's earth, it's a danger to meet like this. It's straight, it's dangerous. So we're going to talk about a couple other places where persecution happens. And that's the, on a global scale, but I really want, I want to take it back. I want to take it back here. I want to take it back home. Not just Louisiana, not just Lafayette, not just right here. I want to talk about at, how, at the house, at home home, where you lay your head at. All right? Now, when you become a Christian, man, it's, it's, it's a sweet thing at the beginning. It's a sweet thing. It's like a brand new world. Everything looked better now. How do you say, I can see clearly now the rain is gone. Everything just looked different. It's, it's, it's like a honeymoon with you and the Lord, man. You can, you can see things better. You see it in 4K. Everything is crisp. You're like, man, the, the grass is just green today, man. Boy, that sky is something blue. Man, look at that moon. I've never seen that moon like that. Because you just begin to pay attention to God's creation now because he's living in you now. You're a new creature. You're different. And people looking, the people looking at you, why are you smiling so much? What are you so happy about? They don't understand what's going on. They don't see how you're seeing things. You hear things differently now. You, you're loving to hear worship music. Back at the, the you, you wouldn't, wouldn't pay attention to worship music. It's like you got to hear worship music now. It helps your spirit. And then when you go back and you just go back and try to listen to the word, you'd be like, oh, man. That's what they were saying in that song? I never noticed that. What? That's what I was jamming on like that? Like, wow, we was tripping. Oh, man. But that's what it is. You have been transformed. It's new. It's just so, it's just so different now. Praise God. It's a great feeling. But at home, they don't understand. They looking at a black and white TV, flow model TV. You looking at everything in 4K trying to explain to them, and they don't know what you're talking about. Life is great. What you mean life is great? God is good. What you mean God is good? I mean, he all right. He be like, he, he more than all right. He allowing me to be, have breath in my body right now. And they're like, man, man, man you've been breathing. I don't know why, why, why it's different today. Not that different. No, because I have an understanding that something else is keeping me alive. I grew up thinking that it was me keeping me alive. No, now I got knowledge that if you want to undo me, you could undo me, and it's just over. And I'm understanding that if I'm here, he's holding me together, so it's something for me to be happy about, to be excited about. But they don't understand that. You start cleaning yourself up, right? You start striving to, to just do the right thing. You just, won't do, you just won't do the right thing. But at home, they're not happy. Or what they see and going on with you. And I wrote this down. They say this, y'all. We want the old you back. Have you heard that before? We want the old you back. This, this version, it's, it's all right, but... And you're looking like, you want the old me back? Do you, do, oh, you want the old me back? No, you don't. You can't have the... I don't want the old me back. No. The old me back almost killed me, man. You talking about the old me? No, that's not what I want. No, you should know. I, I can't go to that. I cannot be that anymore. When a butterfly becomes a, 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 no, when a caterpillar becomes a butterfly, it can't ever go back to being a caterpillar. Ain't. It can't. Cannot. They don't even eat the same thing no more. What a caterpillar eat and what a butterfly eat is totally two different things because it's totally two different creatures. You have become a total different creature. The Bible says you're a new creature. You think y'all can't know? The old, he, he's, he's gone. He's dead, the Bible says. He done died with Christ, man. 
They, they, they're not coming back. And they can't accept that. They, they can't accept that. So it could be rough at home. But Jesus said it. Y'all going to be familiar with this scripture, Mark 6, 4. But Jesus said unto them, a prophet is not without honor, but in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house. He's not even accepted in his own house no more. And because you have accepted Jesus, you, you, you're a little Jesus walking around. Nah, nah, you know what I'm saying? There, there's a prophet living inside of you. You understand? The, the great prophet himself. He living in you. And they, they, they're not, they, they, they don't understand. They can't handle that. The ESV says, and Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his own hometown, among his relatives, and in his own household, man. Sometimes people in your, in your own home, they don't want you to be around them more. they like, we can't, we, don't, we, we good. Because you're just trying to do and live what's right. And the reason, y'all, why, why this, this separation begins to happen is because the glory of God is on you. All right? That, that righteous living that you, you're just trying to, you know, you're not perfect. But because you're striving, the glory of God is on you. Because you have a desire to strive for that, and because you're striving for that, that glory, that presence that's on you, they can't handle his presence. They can't handle that glory that's on you because when they come around you, you are reminding them of their sin. You ain't even got to say it no more. Just, just you show up there and they, 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 everybody kind of just move back. Or you don't get the phone calls no more. They, they stop. They stop. And they begin to mistreat you. They might even harass you. They might even cause trouble in your life because you're just trying to do God. That's it. You're just trying to do right. It's like, man, what? I'm just trying to do the right thing, man. And it made me think about Joseph. It made me think about Joseph. Joseph, y'all, man, he the 11th son of Jacob. All right? Now, he's the first son from his favorite wife, Rachel. Jacob's favorite wife. Favorite wife was Rachel. Now you're like, what do you mean his favorite wife? So if he had a favorite, did he have more than a little situation that was happening, man? All right. And, and we're in the book of Jasher right now. And you could go a little deeper in it with, with Jasher in there, man. And, you know, y'all know the situation. Jacob was going, he wanted Rachel. He had to work for Rachel for seven years. All right. And the deal didn't happen. But Jacob kind of, he, he got caught up with that because he was a trickster, then the trickster got tricked. That's what happened. You can't go around tricking people, you know what I'm saying? And it came back, and, and, it, and it came back in, in, in a crazy way. That's like, man, I mean, that's like you, you, you're working for seven years. You want Miss Leola, Deaconess Leola, all right? You work for seven years, and they, they give you a Stacy. And you're like, wait, this is not, that wasn't part of the deal. And then he got to work another seven years just to get where his heart, where his heart really, really wanted. Now, here's the, here's the problem that comes in. All right, so he has Leah, they have children. He has Rachel. He finally gets Rachel, but they, they still don't have children. He have children with Leah. And then Leah gives her handmaid to Jacob. Now, they got children. So now you got two of it. Then Rachel upsets her, and Rachel gives her handmaid you got some whole Hagar stuff, go Hagar stuff going on now, like on the on like like on what to the tent power or something. You know what I'm saying? Now you got all these children. All right, fast forward now, you got ten of them boys. All right, and then boom, out comes Joseph from the favorite wife, his Rachel. And now the other brothers looking at that and seeing how excited Jacob is that Joseph is born, and he looking like. Man, I ain't saw you wasn't that excited for Judah like that when Judah was. I don't remember him excited like that for Zebulon and Naphtali. He wasn't that excited, but he sure was excited for this little Joseph boy. What's that about? What about us? And then to make matters even, even I say worse, but God intended, Jacob puts the coat of many colors upon Joseph. Now, it's a beautiful thing because the, the love that Jacob got for Joseph, but in, in, in the spirit, there was like a separation going on. It was saying that that one different. 
And it made me think about us. God looks at you like that. You different. And he put a coat upon you. He put the blood of Jesus upon you. So you walking around here with a blood of Jesus starter jacket, a blood of Jesus letterman jacket walking around here, all right? And you set apart. You're different. And you've been different. You know you've been different. Even before Christ, you was just a little bit different from the rest. But you didn't quite know what it was. Now, you was doing the same bad thing as other people, but in the back of your mind, you still kind of feel like, man, I probably shouldn't do that, but you go ahead and you do it because you're trying to be cool. You want to be do what everybody else is doing. But you always been different. You always been set apart. So the same way Joseph is set apart, you are set apart. But 1 Peter chapter 2, 9 says, but ye are a chosen generation, y'all a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. He called you out of darkness. He called you out of that. He brought you to the light. You're different. And you got to be okay. Be cool with being different because you've been different. You've been different. Now, it, it goes even a little further, man, because... Joseph's brothers persecute, persecute him, and it's out of envy. They see the love that, 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 uh, that Jacob has for him. They don't like that coat that's on him. And they sell him into slavery. But what's crazy is, first, first of all, how you sell your own relative into slavery? That's cold. I mean, imagine, can you imagine, like, you, you sell your brother, like, you sell them. You really, you, 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 you watch and leave them, like, what? But then I thought about it even a little bit deeper, like, wait. It wasn't a selling. That, that was the, the original plan was to leave him for dead. They wanted to kill him. They wanted to kill him, and they left him in a pit to die. The book of Joshua talk about when they left him in that pit to die, can you imagine? They put him in and they walk away. And, that, and, he, and he's crying. The jazz are talking about how he's, 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 uh, he's a young man and he's screaming, he's crying. Come to find out in that pit, man, there were scorpions at the bottom of that pit. Visualize this. You in a pit that is so deep, you can't crawl out, can't climb out. And you're young and your own family throw you down there. And you look and you see, and scorpions. Scorpions. Now the power of God come through, and not one scorpion touched Joseph. The Jasher says that all the scorpions began to just crawl on the walls, and they stayed on the walls. That's great. I wish God would have just took them out the, the, the pit, cause I would still be uncomfortable. Jesus, Jesus, I'm, not, I'm not moving. You know what I'm saying? Some scorpions, dog. Like, bruh. And it's crazy that they left him for dead, man. They left him for dead. And what I see in that is, you know, people could turn their back on you. You know, they could persecute you, they could leave you, but God ain't gonna leave you. God ain't love Joseph. He came through for him. And that's what the Lord do. He'll keep, will still come through, man. He's still gonna come through. You guys, we, we gotta be different. We got to be different. Now, moving forward, y'all, uh, not just in the home, persecution also happens uh, with friends. It happens with friends. And that's where, that, this is where the rubber really, really, really meets because home, you know, yeah, it, it's, it, it's crucial out there because they, 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 you know, they grew up, which they saw you all the time, so they, you know, they know how you are. But with the friends, you know, because you can't, you can't change your brothers out. Your brother is your brother. That, that's just, you know, your sister's your sister. Your dad is your, your relative. But friends, you got options. When it comes to friends, this is the true test. Listen to me. The friendship category is going to be the true showing whether you're really down for this Christian walk. All right? Because they're going to they they see what's going on with you, and you have a, have a choice to make. Because they, they like, like the family didn't say, we want to owe you back. The friends will say the, the exact same thing. Because they know how you get down. 
Because you used to get down a certain way with your friends that you didn't deal with around your people. But with your friends back then, they know how you got down. And they go, see, you, oh, you, you, you're doing this guy stuff, but uh, let's, let's go back. And it's like, no, I can't do that. Now, if you do not change your friends, you ain't going to be able to do this Christian walk. That's just, that's just, you're not going to be able to. Because, how do you say, birds of a feather flock together. You know, you a new creature, and you're trying to be a caterpillar around the other caterpillars, but you a butterfly, and you're trying to fly low with them, and that's not, you're not created for that no more. You're totally different. It don't feel the same no more. You don't even like it no more. It smell bad. It, 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 you're not even with it no more. You can't. So your friend's going to have to change. And the, true, the Christian, you're going to have a desire to want to be around other believers. Yes, sir. You have a desire just to want to be around people that, 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 that speak more uh, uh, highly, just about life, man, just about God. You, you have to be around those types of people. It's going to help you walk. But staying connected to, to, to the same old people, now, it's not saying that you, you just, you know, I'm about to say annihilate them. No, don't annihilate them. Uh, not to say you exile them for your life. You, you can check on them, you know, every six months, year, you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, because unless you started walking your path that you go, because this was going to happen. If you try to, and it's funny, if you try to bring them, if you stay with them too long, it's really not going to be you bringing them. It's going to be them bringing you back. That's just how it goes, man. You're going to be outnumbered. It's, you, can't, you can't do it. You can't do it. So friendship is, 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 so, is a vital, vital place, man. Persecution happens, and they could drive you away. They're not going to call no more, and be okay with that. Because let me tell you something, man. When my, when my friends change, man, bro, the Lord gave me some great friends in this walk, man. I mean, some, some you, know, they, they, you know, the old friends have been replaced. I mean, it's just, it's just what it is, you know what I'm saying? But I praise God for that. Because I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to be up here right now. I wouldn't be married to that woman back there. Staying with the old friends, it wasn't going to happen. No, nope. you got to make that hard decision. Are you really about this walk? It does come at a cost, but I'm telling you, it's worth it. Hands down, it's worth it. Let them call you crazy. Let them call you church boy. Let them call you a little, you want to be a little first lady. Let them call you all whatever they want to call you. Let them. But you tell them, that's cool though, but I'm supremely blessed though. And my life is much, much better now. You know what I'm saying? Glory to God. Third place we want to talk about where persecution happens. I talked about it globally, but I'm going to go back to it. We're going to talk about in the world, but in the world system, the persecution that goes on. And I'm going to be quick about it, man. But you could see, you can tell, you can discern, man, the level of, of, of persecution that's going on in media, in TV. How can I say that? The themes that's going on out there that you see on TV, the themes that's going on in television shows and commercials and everything like that, is it Christian? No. Is any of it Christian? With a Christian theme? No. Hardly none of it. What is the theme, though? A homosexual agenda, a fornication agenda, a gambling agenda, an alcohol agenda. It, it, you can see, it's all over the place. That's a form of persecution. Because you, you're pushing, you're putting in before me all the things I should not do all the time, everywhere I go. You flip this on, flip that on. It's, 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 just, it's just everywhere. It's all over. And this is all being done, y'all, to drive us away from what? From God. It's trying to make us run away. It's trying to make us flee from God, man. And this brings up the next point. As we talk about the world and the world system, even there's religious persecution. Even in the house of God, persecution could take place. I was like, wow. The Lord showed me. I said, well, where? He said, well, look in your scriptures. I want to talk about Stephen. We're going to learn about Stephen real quick. Now, Stephen, man, the story about Stephen is found in, in Acts. All right? Now, I'm going to just be real quick with it. In Acts chapter 5, uh, that gives the account of Ananias, uh, and Ananias and Sapphira. You don't know that story right quick, man. What went down was, because I know we got some new people in there sometimes. So Ananias and Sapphira, man. So the church, so Jesus then, he didn't died on the cross, rose again. Uh, the word had been spread abroad everywhere. 
The church is, is, is booming, man. It's going out and it's multiplying. You know what I'm saying? So ch church is beginning to gather and, they, and people want to give to the ministry. They're trying to give to it, right? So people are giving up their land. They're giving up their houses because they believe in what's going on. It's real and they, everybody's excited. So in a nice and fire, they come through, husband and wife, they won't do the same thing. But remember when I talked about earlier a reality of goodness and a perception of goodness? They had a perception of goodness because they wanted to look good in front of the people. Now, they sold their land, and they said they sold it for this much, and they gave a part of it to the church. While they said that they gave all of it what they sold for the sale of the land to the church. Little caveat, like, they didn't have to lie, number one. It's, oh, it's quite okay if they, if they would have said, look, we're going to sell this land for this much, we're going to take part of it, we're going to give it to the church. And when they asked you, did you sell how much you sold it for? You should have just told the truth. We kept the portion and this would it would have been cool. But no, you want to look like how the other ones did because other people gave it all. And you want to look like them. That's what I'm saying. A perception of goodness and the reality was, and they got got fed. Holy Spirit knocked them both out. Like not just a knockout, but like KO finished. They're not getting back up again. That's what can hold on in Acts. Now after this, man, after this, the elders of Israel begin to discuss about Peter. And they're like, man, this, this Peter boy here, man, he's he, he doing these miracles, he's doing these things. And um, that's a problem, man. We, we got to do something about it. And one of the elders of Israel said, wait up, hold up. If this thing is not of God, don't even worry about it. That little fire, it's, it's just a little fire. If, it ain't, it ain't, if it's not God, it's just going to dispel. It ain't, ain't going to last nothing. But if it be of God, lest you be fighting against God, Leave it alone. Don't touch it. Let's see what God do with it. They was worried about Peter. Peter was doing his thing. So then we come in in Acts 6, 1 through 10. I'm going to just read it, man. And in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews. Now, Pastor had broke that down about the Grecians and the Hebrews. So the Grecians was like, they, 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 they Greek and they black. Right? You feel me? Okay. And now they got a murder against the Hebrews, so that, that's, 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 that's black folks. So that's like, I'm going to say it like that. That's like uh, the Creoles and the blacks. Yes, sir. Like they had, they was quarreling. Because they're like, man, y'all not. Well, the thing was because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. So there was things that was given out, food and, and help to the widows. And it was like, well, the Hebrews' widows was getting what they needed, but the Grecian ones, which were a mix, they was being set, they was getting like knocked off on the side. And there was a complaint that arose about this, man. So now the 12 called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, it is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the saying pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith, and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and Pro Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, or Timon, and Parmenius, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch, whom they set before the, the apostles. And when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. And the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. Verse 8, and Stephen, full of faith, and power did great wonders and miracles among the people. Stephen walking around there doing things like Jesus, man. He probably doing things even colder than Jesus because Jesus said, man, greater works, these works I do, but greater works you shall do. So Stephen is going off. He prophesying. He laying hands on people. He is healing the sick. He doing it all, man. Then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines and Crenians and Alexandrians and of them of Cilicia and of Asia, disputing with Stephen. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. Stephen was not only moving in power of God, but he had the wisdom of Solomon in him, man. And he was cutting them bars up. In Acts 7, 51 through 52, he says, Ye stiff neck and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did, so do ye. Stephen was breaking all down all the way from Adam to, to everybody after that. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all the, the tribes, all the prophets. He ran through the whole history of the Hebrews, man. 
And he was saying, look, y'all always resisting the truth of God. Y'all keep resisting the truth of God. And y'all fathers did the same thing. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers. So he lightened them up and saying, just like uh, y'all wasn't listening back then, and those that told y'all the truth, y'all murdered them. The very one they was talking about, he didn't came and y'all murdered him. Stephen hit him with, with that, that truth, that, that, that truth bomb. And that's the thing about persecution. When you present the truth, you will be persecuted. And we have to be careful which side we on the persecution. We got to be careful not to be on the side of doing the persecuting when the truth comes our way. You're going to see it here, what's going to happen next. Be careful with persecution, not only going through persecution, but do not be the one on the side where you are doing the persecuting because somebody did hit you with what the truth was, what does say the Lord. Acts 7, 54 through 60, when they heard these sayings, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth. Did y'all read that right? Did I say that right? Go back one right quick. And they gnashed on him with their teeth. They took hold of Stephen. I'm, I'm thinking about zombie stuff, man. They like, they, they, but this is the thing, they blacked out. That's what happened. They got so in a rage because he hit them with the truth. They blacked out and they lost their mind and they grabbed Stephen. They grabbed him, but he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. And he said, behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. So they, 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 they grabbed him, they biting on him, he looking up and he's seeing that the heavens open up and he's like, man, that's Jesus right there and he's standing he's next to God right now. This is what they do. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears. They couldn't take hearing him talk about God. They were so angry in their heart that, he, that Stephen told them the truth. It was just what it was. They were so much in a rage. They blacked out completely. They yelled all the more to drown out. That's what they stopped their ears. They yelled to drown out what he was saying, the truth of what he was seeing. And they cast them out of the city and stoned them. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul, who we will see later will be Paul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. That's what Stephen said. And he kneeled down, y'all, and he cried with a loud voice, saying, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Lay not this sin to their charge. As we face persecution, Stephen is teaching us. And who taught Stephen? Jesus himself, being on the cross, persecuted upon the cross, on there, and you're going to say, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. That's a whole nother level of kingdom-minded understanding. That's a whole different attitude about what's going on around you. Being able to forgive those who are persecuting, being able to forgive those family members that they cutting up with you, but you see, be able to be, don't be mad at them. See what's going on. Understand what you're called to do, what you're called to be. Be that light. With them friends, it's, it's okay. They, they could, they not, it's cool. That's supposed to happen. We got to forgive them. We got to forgive them. Wrap it up, y'all. We, we could, uh, y'all could, uh, the band, yeah, I mean, y'all could come on through. We on the last scripture. I just want to leave y'all with this, man, and not to be hurt when that persecution comes because it's part of the journey. Amen. You know, you got to count the cost to do this walk. Like I said earlier, though, but it's worth it, though. It's worth it, though. That persecution happens, that shows that, yeah, you, you, you part of this faith, and you believe in this thing. And I'm going to quote something that, that Jesus said for us to take to our heart and to remember. 
Because if anybody who ever faced persecution, it was Jesus himself. And the reason you're facing persecution is because you believe in that Jesus. Right? John 15, 18 through 27. Jesus says, if the world hates you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hated you. Remember, he says, y'all. He says, remember in the scripture. Remember this. Remember the word that I said unto you. The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin, meaning that they can't hide it. They sin is wide open. There's no, there's no righteousness to cover them because they didn't want to believe in me. He that hated me hated my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, Stephen was doing the same thing, doing works that no other man did. They had not had sin, but now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. Realize, if they hate you, it's not you that they hate. It's the Jesus that's in you. And if they hate the Jesus that's in you, they hate, the, they hate who sent Jesus, which is God. They really got a problem with God. That's what it is. But this cometh to pass, that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. Hallelujah. But when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth. The Spirit of truth. That's what's riding with you. That's what's in you. You ride with truth everywhere you go. The truth is in you because you believe in Jesus, which proceeded from the Father, and he shall testify of me. And ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. He said, we've been with him from the beginning. How? How we was with him before? Since the beginning. He called you before the foundations of the world. You was destined to be saved. You was destined to be his. You were destined to be a child of God. You didn't choose it. There's nothing you could have do to, 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 to get out of it. You've been chosen, and this is your path. This is your journey. For anybody that's listening, that don't know what this fuss is about, that don't understand about this persecution, don't understand why we don't mind being persecuted, you, that means you need Jesus. That means you need to be able to get your sins forgiven. That means you need to be able to to, to, to believe in him. And then you're going to have to confess out of your mouth, man, that Jesus Christ is Lord and he's real. And he could change your life as the many other lives that he has done also in this place. He's real. I heard it just the other day, man. Adrian Rogers was on, and he's not even alive no more, but he was on the radio with a message, and he talked about people that... Uh, when they, 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 they get put upon a lie detector test. And there have been so many times that they've made an account of putting a person on a lie detector test and asking them, is God real? Those that say God is not real, the lie detector test is saying they lying. What that mean? You can try to lie your way out of it that God's not real, but your body, your mind, your subconscious is still declaring that God is real and you can't even stop it. You can't stop it. He real, man. He real. Y'all can just stand with me. We gonna close, man. We gonna just do the sinner's prayer. Now, this is not really nothing magical about the prayer, nothing, you know, lights, camera, fireworks, nothing like that. But I remember this prayer, hearing it for the first time, man, and it changed my life back at, at that old building at 201, man. 
And I ain't been the same since. And I believe it has more to do with the understanding of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Because we all grew up in, the, in this area where we, we heard about Jesus dying on the cross. It's not a new thing. But when it really enters your heart, that he really died for you personally, for your sins, for the things that you've done, and you accept that his death was your fault. But then you also accept his rising again was for you as well. For you to rise again to a new life. So just repeat after me. Say, Lord, I come before you a sinner, a wrongdoer, I need your forgiveness. I need you to wash me with the blood of Jesus. The blood that you spilled on the cross on behalf of me. Make me a new person. Make me a new creature. Give me the mind of Christ. Give me new eyes. Give me new ears. Save my soul. I admit that I'm a sinner. I believe that you died on the cross. I believe that you rose again on the third day. And I believe that you're coming back for me. I confess out of my mouth that Jesus Christ, Yahshua HaMashiach, is Lord, is Lord, is Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give God glory, y'all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a scripture that comes to my mind, man, before we go. Remember, it says that in the presence of the angels of God, there's joy for one sinner that comes to repentance. And I made a mistake of that scripture. I, I, when I thought about it, I thought it was the angels rejoicing. But it's not talking about the angels rejoicing. It's God rejoicing that you are born again. It's him rejoicing the same way when Joseph was born. He's rejoicing. God is rejoicing that you are born again. Y'all go in peace and go in shalom. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah.